segment now, but I, 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 I didn't know that there was this gargantuan like beef between Philly 500 and between Mark Holmes, who covers the Dallas Cowboys. You know, we, we had Philly on last week, and I, and, I, and I was paraphrasing. I said, hey, listen, Philly 500, Mark Holmes says that you're his son and that you get his slippers and his sippy cup when he's watching the Cowboys 22, and he's breaking it down. And he says that you go out and get him a sandwich or you'll make him a PJ every now and then. He's like, that guy's delusional. There's something seriously wrong with that man. And he has been so – he's a cow – without further ado, he's live on – The draft is going to be – Mark, how you doing, brother? Man, I literally – you know what, Dan? I'm going to tell you how much I love you, bro. We got up at 5 a.m. this morning. We drove 529 miles. We literally got here to the hotel at 2.52 – Got our bags unloaded, and I'm sitting here in the bar with this lovely lady over here who's feeding me some wonderful drinks here from downtown Detroit at the draft. Literally, the draft stage is over here about four-tenths of a mile from us, and we are ready to rock and roll because as Cowboy fans, it's all we got. It's all we got is a draft. <laughs> hey, how is Detroit embracing the draft, man? Is everything lit up in that area, getting ready for all the fans? They're, I hear they're expecting like over 350,000 fans in that area. Yeah, well, I'm going to tell you right now, they haven't gotten here yet. But here's what I can tell you about Detroit, because I was blessed to actually meet one of those guys that you are really great friends with, was Michael Irvin here when they had the Super Bowl. I think it was 2007. And, you know, I'm going to, I hope you don't mind me telling a quick story, though, about Michael Irvin, because I was at the NFL commissioner's party, which was Roger Goodell's first year of taking over for the NFL from Paul Tagliabue. Okay. And it was so incredible because they literally had every Super Bowl MVP that was still alive there at the commissioner's party. And I'm looking around, I see Jerry Jones and his table and Emmett Smith. And, you know, I'm in stalker mode because I'm Joe the fan. And I see Michael Irvin over by where all the food is. And if you've ever been to the commissioner's party, the food is literally unbelievable. But the problem was Michael Irvin had found out an hour before that he wasn't going to be a first ballot Hall of Famer. And literally nobody would go anywhere near Michael Irvin because nobody knew what to say because they knew how dejected he was. Well, me being a diehard Dallas Cowboy fan thinking, I don't know if I'll ever get the chance to meet Michael Irvin again. I went over and started talking to him and talked to him for about 10 minutes and stuff and had the greatest conversation with him. I knew how down he was and everything else, but that was the beginning. And, and the funny thing was years later, I took the picture that I took with him at that um, event and I got him to autograph it at an autograph signing show. And he looked at the suit and he said, I can't believe I wore that damn suit. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that was actually really great. Detroit. Um, it's, cool for me because I haven't been back in about six years or so seeing it change. They are excited. They are ready for the draft and uh, I'm ready for it because like I said, as a Cowboy fan, there's nothing else for us. Let me give you one of the greatest Michael Irvin stories of all time. We were both mm -hmm. 19 years old at the university of Miami. You remember, um, you remember Tone Loke? And you yes, remember all the guys that wore the Let's do the wild thing. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And, and, and they would wear all like the clocks and the timers and all that around the neck. The rappers would do mm -hmm. this. Michael Irvin used to do this too. He had a timer around his neck all the time, but he wasn't doing it for fashion. He had a time on it of 445. And I remember. Oh, him okay. Watching going forward in a mile and running backwards a mile. And he came mm -hmm. up when he was 19 years old, and he goes like this, Mark. You see that number, 445? If I mm -hmm. get that number, I'm a Hall of Famer. Oh, and wow. I, he was 19 years old when he said that. So that guy's been driven to be the very best that he ever wanted to be. And it was starting when he was 19 years old. So. And that was at the University mm -hmm. of Miami campus. All right. All right, man. Hey, is it my impression, Mark, some of, some of the news coming out of Dallas that Dak oh, Prescott, 
Hold on, let me grab a drink first. Forget the straw. <laughs> <laughs> the news out of Dallas, man. When I literally listened to Jerry Jones yesterday and Stephen Jones, I'm sitting here thinking, why are we doing this press conference? Because the whole thing was basically trying to defend the lack of movement that's going on. And when I hear that Penny Sewell just got locked in after his third year and they're getting paid, their wide receiver, Alan Ra. He's gotten locked in now, you know, after I guess his third year or it's a fourth year that we're seeing all these teams that are making moves to solidify their team base. And for whatever reason, the Cowboys are just sitting on their ass doing absolutely nothing. And they're trying to sell it to you that, you know, you can't make these moves while we are literally watching in real time all of these moves being made, done around us. It, it literally gave me the feeling that. As long as the Jones owned the Cowboys, I may never see the Super Bowl again. As long as they run the Cowboys, I think, get this, Mark, they're brilliant mm -hmm. owners. They're just oh, not brilliant. They're about making money. They're just not brilliant football people. I mean, dude, Dak Prescott, in my opinion, for him to win a Super Bowl, has to go somewhere else you know to be able to win a super bowl i don't think he wins one in dallas you know I, I don't know how anybody wins one in dallas i'll be honest with you you know and hearing mike mccarthy has set up getting uh, a new agent my question is 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 that the cowboys saying we want to negotiate a deal because i'm sitting here in my mind thinking you know because a lot of people figure mike mccarthy can't get another job this is going to be his last go round. But I actually look and say with the dysfunction that he's had with the team that's constantly deconstructing, the fact that you've gone 12 and 5 with three what the Jones are doing, three years in a row. And I, that's what I was saying to my buddy Game Time Bryant. Shout out to him. He actually lives in the Eagle proper and, and is always there sticking a fork in you guys back. <laughs> I actually look and say Mike McCarthy's done a hell of a job with what he's been given. You know, I, I'm. I hate the Eagles. I'll be 100% real. Um, but for you guys to have extra draft picks where you can look and say, you know, we can take a chance on moving up for um, a vertically challenged defensive back. You know, that you have those kinds of options. That you literally have two wide receivers currently on the roster that are being paid $25 million, And one of them you could trade tomorrow and get somebody possibly to replace them. And I look and I hate you guys. But I have to give credit to Howie Roseman on how he manages the cap and deals with free agency. I still say he sucks at the draft. Yes. But the more picks that you, you have because – the Eagles. Do you fear the Eagles no. this year? I don't fear it because, you know, the one thing I can say is the Cowboys have built a team and understands how to win in their division. My core honest thing is if the Cowboys could play the Eagles in the playoffs, we'd actually be pretty good. Yeah, what is it, Dak? Nine and four lifetime versus him? Yeah, nine and four. Now, guys like Twiz Diggy in there, shout out to Twiz and things, they'll say, Oh, well, we were resting our starters. Well, you know, one of those wins that you guys got, we were resting our starters as well. And, and you know, again, the draft and beating our division is all we have as Cowboy fans. And it really sucks. I, I'll be 100% real with it. And the thing is, you know, for all those out there that say, Well, the Cowboys will get rid of Dak and we'll just draft another quarterback. Um, you're going to win probably enough games to make the playoffs, in which case you're not in a position to get one of those quarterbacks that everybody keeps thinking about. Interesting. You know, they always bring up Dak's playoff record against every time you talk to Eagle fan. But if you bring up his lifetime record versus the Eagles, the, oh, it doesn't four. matter. He oh, owns yeah. They'll say that those don't count. It doesn't count when he plays in the playoffs. And it's kind of like you realize that Jalen Hurts is only two and three. Yeah. Right? Yeah. You look at Lamar Jackson is only two and four, and he's been a two-time MVP. You look at a guy like Justin Herbert who had a 27-point lead, and they lost after getting four takeaways from the Jaguars. So this pedestal that, unfortunately, the monster that Jerry Jones has created, you're measured differently than anybody else. If Dak was on any other team having 36 TDs and nine interceptions, they would be praising him to high heaven. So when you look at how they're, 
What does all in mean? What what is what is this definition? It looks like the yardsticks, Mark, are just consistently getting getting moved here when we're doing this. I mean, what what does all in mean? Jerry Jones, if you actually listen to it, and I had a hard time. I couldn't even watch the whole press conference. He basically said, you know, you know, when, when we were talking about all in at the senior bowl, you know, I didn't know the dynamics of the salary cap or where we were and stuff. So that changes. And then he's sitting there talking about, you know, all we're, we're, we're all in with these young guys. We're all in with the draft. And it's like, what? The, it's like, I, I don't know if I'm allowed to cuss on here. Yeah, but in are. words of of what my son Philly Five Hundred says, they shit on you. Don't you get it? Don't you hear me? They have shit on you. They Jerry Jones is PT Barnum. There's yeah. a sucker born every minute, and he knows we're all listening to him and we're all following along with him. And sadly, I'm one of those suckers that want to believe that they're actually going to do something. But you know, this is their time to shine. And to some regard, I don't want to now defend the Cowboys after killing them. But the thing is, is they are good at bringing up homegrown talent. And if our injury player guys, if Diggs comes back healthy, the good thing is at least it was week number three when we got he got injured. If he's healthy, he's one of the best quarterbacks of football. If Deron Bland can take another step from being a pick magnet to being a better cover guy, if they decide, and I think Stefan Gilmore gets brought back, you've got an incredible secondary. If you look at some of the players that we have in a Sam Williams, comparing his numbers by what is he's done during his limited role, if they translate to being a half-the-time starter, you're going to get the production that you had of Dorrance Armstrong. Now you've got holes in the offensive line, but we've had bad offensive line play for the last four years, five years really since uh, Travis Frederick got injured. So Stephen Jones does have a point. We will get a boost from our own guys with their healthy and can return, but it's not enough to make that ultimate um, step. Let me throw this at you here. Is is Dak a better quarterback now without Kellen Moore as the OC? Oh my God, hell yes. And this is the this is actually the real hope. No, I want okay. I want you to think about this. When you think about CD Lamb having seventeen hundred so better without Kellen. Now they have yes, now they yes, have without a doubt. Because here's the thing: it took about the first five games for the Cowboys to get in a rhythm and offense. Literally, there were three games when A.J. Brown was getting like 125 yards a game and everybody was talking about the tear he was on. There were literally three games where C.D. Lamb had a maximum of 53 yards early part of the season. And the offense, everybody was like, this defense is the whole team. That offense, after the bye week, kicked in. If that offense can hit the ground running and they do actually get a running back, I don't know where it's going to come if we're going to draft one in the, the draft or not. If they can get a running game to go with that offense and they start out now because they've been in that offense for a year, that offense, it, it's conceivable 40 TD passes for Dak Prescott. Because Mike McCarthy likes to throw the football. And the thing that he had when he won the Super Bowl was he had – three good tight ends, and he had four deep wide receivers that he go to, you know, guys like Greg Jennings, uh, Donald Driver and things. I mean, he had a lot of weapons. And I'm going to say, I've been talking this this week, knowing the Cowboys, it won't surprise me if they go out and they draft a wide receiver if a really good one falls their way. Because if they can do that and spread the field a little bit more, that's going to help Dak because you're going to have to worry about that um, you RPOs. Can, you think they can move up? I don't think. Before? I don't think they will because they, we don't have the fourth round pick for getting Trey Lance. I don't see them necessarily doing that because they do need a lot of bodies that are out there. But as my buddy over here, Chef David, was pointing out, there are still a lot of really good players that are out there that are free agents that you could use to fill in some holes. And if the Cowboys, if they're all in, is actually all in after the draft. And they start saying, okay, we're going to try and get another defensive tackle to go in there. We're going to get a veteran offensive lineman and so forth and fill some of these places and are able to get some decent starting caliber guys. 
the Cowboys are still a good team. They still have some players. And you can look at any team out there. Everybody has some areas that they need work on. There's no team that has got all pros at every position. Their defense, in my opinion, Mark, is just not good enough. I mean, they got trash cans over on that side of the football. Here, wait a minute. Dirty D says Kellen Moore had the number one and number two out in Dallas. 3,500 is right. Okay. Well, here's the thing. Okay. Well, I tell you what. All right. We'll see. If you take what happened to Justin Herbert with all of the Charger fans, they're like, oh, my God. You know, Kellen Moore had garbage to work with a Dak Prescott. Wait till he has Justin Herbert. Wait till he has all the weapons that we have. And he literally got run out of town, bro. He literally got run out of town, okay? You can think that he's a genius, okay? I'm going to say that I believe that Dak Prescott carried Kellen Moore. Take a look at what Jason Garrett – remember everybody was talking about how Jason Garrett, the Cowboys did him wrong. What happened with Jason Garrett when he went to New York? He got run out of town, right? Okay, all right. You're saying that Dak carried Jason Garrett and I don't know what we're doing here. Yes. We're going to do a live stream tonight. Yes. <laughs> okay. You can call, you can call me crazy. You can call me crazy because here's the thing: we went from Scott Linehan to Jason Garrett to Kellen Moore, right? What have any of those guys done since Dak Prescott? Nothing. But yet, Dak Prescott, two of the last three years, has been a finalist for MVP. Be cool. We could have a couple tables. Why did they move off of Kellen Moore? Why did they move off of him? Because Kellen, you know what? I'm going to say Kellen Moore. Here's the thing about Kellen Moore. Kellen Moore does. He is really, really intelligent. But see, there's some guys that rise to the occasion when the pressure is on. And when I look at Jason Garrett and Kellen Moore, it seemed like when we get to the playoffs, the things that we would normally do that worked well would just go out the window. You're sitting here. One of the best packages the Cowboys have had in the last few years has actually been 12 personnel. And now that you have, you know, a Jake Ferguson who is stepping up and becoming that kind of guy, you can line up in 12 personnel. And when you had Tony Pollard, who's kind of a dynamic, more of a receiver than running back, you could end up looking like you're needing to put eight men in the box, right? All of a sudden you shift Tony Pollard outside, you split Dalton Schultz out or now Jake Ferguson. Now all of a sudden you're looking at five wideouts. If you are in eight men in the box and now I've got Brandon Cooks, C.D. Lamb, I had Tony Pollard, I got Jake Ferguson and Schoonmaker, now I've got to try and cover all these guys. And Dak Prescott, you can trash them all you want to, is good at finding the guy that's open. And that's where you have matchup problems. Come playoff time, we forget about that moving the pocket, you know, doing bootlegs, doing 12 personnel and things. And, of course, his trick plays, the only people his trick plays ever trick are the Cowboys. <laughs> we trick ourselves, okay? I'm telling you. Good what luck with that. What impact do you think Kellen Moore has on Jalen Hurts? I'm not sure that that's a match that's going to work. You need Jalen Hurts to be able to – Run the football. His legs are a big part of his game. Will we see any more RPOs or running in that offense, or were we going to see more flare passes and screen passes? To you're, see? you're 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 going to have to see that. You're going to have to see that. And this is where huh. you're going to need Jalen Hurts to evolve some, and you're going to need Kellen Moore to evolve. You're going to have to try and meet each other in the middle for that to be successful, in my mind. And I'm not sure that that's going to be in Kellen Moore's game plan. I, I'm just not sure about that. Hang on, another super chat. How many picks did Dak have against Green Bay? There, uh, Mark. He's he's calling out what kind of Two. game he played. Two. One of one of okay. Now, and I'm not going to dispute that he had two interceptions in that game, but I can tell you when the running game went to shit like it does every. The Bucks? Thank you. Um, th this is the thing that's funny to me is you would think that Eagle fans think that they won the Super Bowl last year and that they did such great things that the Cowboys didn't do. Uh, when I checked, this shit that we're hearing right now about how the Cowboys suck, they don't do anything free agency, this is every year. This isn't new. I challenge anybody out there to say, what big name free agents have the Cowboys brought in? What big move have the Cowboys done in the last three years? We've done none. The Eagles, on the other hand, everybody says Super Bowl favorite, 
Jalen Hurts, best quarterback in football, you know, MVP candidate, right? You go out, you trade for A.J. Brown. We get rid of talent. We have literally guys on one leg, okay? So for us to somehow get second seed and the Eagles to go down to Tampa Bay and lose to Baker Mayfield, I'm sorry. You're in the same boat we are. You had one good year with Jalen Hurts so far. So take that, Eagle fans. How about this? I'm with you, man. Do you think they paid that guy too soon? Well, here's the thing. Here's the thing that, that you have to at least look at. Because when I look, I think his cap hit is was nine million last year. Yeah, and I think it's thirteen really million this year. Yeah. The thing that I wish my Cowboys would do. See, the thing they don't understand is you paying uh Devontae Smith now, getting him twenty five million, which I'm not sure that, that 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 that's the right number for him. No, he but here's the thing: for three years, it, exactly because his contract's not at the end of the rope. So you're paying him now in today's dollars, but you're not actually paying the bill down the road. So when that 25 million comes in, what's going to happen is he's going to look at it and say, "Wait a minute, man! This dude's getting made paid 45 million. I'm only getting 25." That's where it's intelligent. When you look at right now, the Lions paying Penny Sewell. And Amon Rahm, you know, right now, they're not flipping those bills for a couple of years. Those guys feel great because they're getting a big fat check now. But unfortunately, when you pay C.D. Lamb and Dak Prescott on the last years of their deals, there's no room to hide it. You're paying today's dollars today, and you're dealing with the dead money that Dak Prescott has. And so that's where everybody wants to look and say, well, you know, Dak Prescott is sucking up more money than everybody else. No, he's not. It's because the Joneses don't know how to maneuver with the cap. It's the bottom line. Two last questions for you here, Mark. Um, okay. When you look at the three players, C.D. Lamb, Dak, and Micah, in your opinion, who gets extended first? C.D. And right now, the Cowboys literally shit the bed because – They've waited, and they continue to wait. Um, I know that Justin Jefferson and CD have the same agent, and they're basically trying to play games so that way they're both, like, right there. One will get a half a million more. Um, They need to get these. Right, exactly. Jamar Chase, um, Waddles out there. This reason of waiting where Jerry Jones says, you know, <laughs> just because my, you don't see my eyebrows move or anything like that or and all that doesn't mean we're not thinking about it because I'm playing option quarterback hey, here. Hey, wait, wait, I'm wait, like, Mark, <laughs> Mark, here's my favorite one. Hell, I'll take a paternity test before I trade Michael Parsons. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> uh, didn't the court order you to take one? <laughs> Well, hey, this is the court of Jerry Jones, son. Know where you are. You're in Texas now. Oh, man. It's it, it's just kind of crazy. I mean, in the end, all three of them will be signed. And the sad thing is, is the Cowboys can move off of Dak Prescott. And I think actually Dak Prescott is the one who's actually kind of saying, let me take a wait and see. I'll be 100% real. When I heard what I heard yesterday, on the same day that is the fourth year anniversary of my brother committing suicide, I want you to understand that. Yesterday was four years ago that his brother committed suicide. You see an hour-long press conference of Jerry Jones that says that, you know, we're going to keep Dak. We like Dak. We're going to pay Dak. But, you know, we won't be able to put other people around him. Why do I want to stay? No, I mean, and, and that's not that. why, why do I want to stay? But, but Mark, that's not Dak's concern that you can't pay other people because you don't know how to manage your money the way the Eagles do. That's right. not his concern. And for him to throw that out there like that is kind of trying to make him a scapegoat for them not being able oh. to retain all their pieces. Bro, that's that, right that's, there. that is it exactly. And that's the thing. That's the reason why they want to bring Dak back is because it gives them cover because when it doesn't work out, well, you know, we, we, we had to pay Dak. You know, we, we, we wanted to build a championship team, but, you know, Dak Prescott, he had to be the highest paid out there. That is their, their, their reset. But they had four years of not paying him, and they did nothing then. So it, it just is what it is being a Cowboy fan. How about this? Final question for you. Where do you think they go in the draft at number 24? What do you think they do there? It's going to, you know, it's going to be interesting to see how the draft all falls. 
Um, I think they really do want to get a starting center. And uh, Powers, I believe, will be the guy that is there because they want to – the thing that Cowboys always like to do with that first-round pick. Huh? Don't forget about Zach Frazier. Well, Zach Frazier, yeah. Zach Frazier's another one. Between the two of those guys, Zach Frazier and Powers, um, you look at that and say that's a guy I can plug in right now. But don't be surprised, to, in, in my mind, if the Cowboys take a receiver because, you know, that's a guy that helps sell some jerseys. That'll be a guy that can help spread the field. And they'll look at it and say, we believe in Brock Hoffman. He's a guy who's already been here. We can plug him in. You're shaking your head game time. What? 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 Like, nobody really knows. I can put my crazy conspiracy theory out here. Freaking mailman. I thought uh, if Brock Bowers is sitting around somewhere, do you think they'd go get him? Uh, that would be tempting. That That's a possibility. But I don't think they're going to move up, though. I just don't think they're going to do it. I think it's interesting to see. Could they take an OT? They can, but the thing is, you're going to have a run on offensive tackles, and that goes against their philosophy. You're going to be three, four, maybe five deep, depending on how many quarterbacks are taken. And so getting a guy that you feel like is ready to start tomorrow, um, like uh, Mozzie, I'm excuse me, Tyler Smith, I I'm not sure that that's going to be the case. And I think they'll look at it and say that one of the centers would be the one to be able to do that. I'm going to do one, two last things for you here, or I'm going to ask uh -oh. you. Over under, two last things. Over under, Dak Prescott throws for 4,000 yards. Over. Okay. Easily over. Over under, Jalen Hurts throws for four grand. Under. <laughs> over, <laughs> under over under, um, Dak Prescott throws for over 30 TDs. Over. Over under Jalen Hurts throws for 30 TDs. Under. <laughs> Come on, man. Seriously. Hold on. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Over under interceptions. Dak Prescott 12. Under. I'm gonna say because see, people don't want to give credit to Mike McCarthy. Mike McCarthy is a good offensive mind. He's not great. Okay, he is not necessarily great with clock management and stuff. He is kind of more laid back and, you know, and so forth. I wish he were more assertive with, with Jerry Jones, but he is not a bad offensive coordinator. And I don't know that Aaron Rodgers has the development that he's had without having Mike McCarthy as much as he hated him. Jalen Hurts over under 15 interceptions. Mm. He had 15 last I'm year. Gonna say, I'm going to say I'm going to say under. I think he'll be better. You think he'll be around that number, though? I think he'll be around that number. <laughs> so in the last two years, you're saying he could potentially have 30, 30 INTs? Yeah. <laughs> I, well, yeah that's, that's, you have, you have that, that, that surprises you. Oh, no, it doesn't. I think he's going to, too. <laughs> now, here's what I'm going to tell you is going to happen, though, with your offense. Your run after catches, watch, will come down. He does so many curls and comeback routes and things. And see, that's one of those things that I hate because I want my guy going downfield so he can make a play and get those yards at the catch. There are so many times you look and you see everybody doing a freaking curl, uh, curl route with Kellen Moore. And you're like, what the hell are you doing? And that's the kind of stuff that will drive you crazy because, you know, one game you'll see him co you know, call plays. And you're like, oh, my God, this guy's incredible. And the next game it's like, what the fuck are you doing? What are you doing? Oh my God, this is great! All right, Mark, um, what do you tell folks what you're doing tomorrow for the draft? Well, we will actually be. You know, last year we found the perfect location. We were actually broadcasting live from inside the perimeter. Lame, by the way, but go ahead. Too late, mother. Okay, but you know what, Prince? Here's the funny thing, bro. You're watching, though. We may be late, but you're watching, and we appreciate that. And on top of it. You're spending money. We appreciate that even yeah, more. Yeah. So what does that make you, man? What does that make you? Yeah. Now, I, I'm uh, actually, before we get out of here, I got I got a lot of flack because, see, yeah. you know, I'm, I'm kind of doing a little bit of a rope and dope. I'm trying to feel this thing out because I really enjoy actually having conversations with you. And I would love to come out, hang out with you sometimes, smoke a couple of cigars, have a sure. few drinks and shoot the shit. But I'm kind of just kind of laying back and just kind of biding my time and doing that rope-a-dope and stuff. But you were talking about 
Dak Prescott, Micah Parsons, if they pay those guys, that they'll never, ever win a Super Bowl. Never. And if we're currently constructed at the way we are, you're probably right. But I still think, I still think that the Dallas Cowboys, with this much shit, and you can kind of see Jerry Jones right now, is getting a little testy. When Jane Slater went back at him and said, why are you waiting on these things? That they're beginning to look bad. And I feel like they need to do something to turn this thing around. That maybe, you know, there's no point in signing anybody at this point before free agency. I mean, before the draft. When the draft is over, don't be surprised if the Cowboys do start getting aggressive with some of these free agents that are out there to fill in the holes. Because you still have some guys that are really good. you got an all-pro wide receiver, all-pro wide quarterback, all-pro defensive end. You've got a guy who was... You know, MB, uh, MVP runner-up on defense, pick magnet. And you got another one that's coming back. You have some studs in some places. Mark, they are not going anywhere until they start putting people in football decision-making positions. I agree. And do this. The problem with the Dallas Cowboys and Jerry and Steve is the Joneses. Are all in love with their players instead of like with their players. And they overvalue. They do a great job at drafting. Yeah. But what they, they do. do is they don't make the tough They don't call. follow it up. Jalen Smith, we mentioned this oh, last geez. time. He gave him a contract yeah. extension for a bum. For I mean, one good year. One good year. That's like me talking about Hurts. You gave a guy $255 million off of one great season. That's not worthy to me. Mm -hmm. And I look at Dak and I go, hey, look at Dak Prescott. Well, Dak Prescott's a Dallas Cowboy. You know what that means? Nobody gives a shit, Dak, what Patrick Mahomes does <laughs> in the regular season anymore. They right. only care what he does in the playoffs. in the playoffs. Yeah. Dak, when you're a Cowboy quarterback, they only care and put you against Aikman and Staubach. They don't put you against yep. Tony Romo and Danny White. You can't. True on that. He's being compared to Danny White and Tony Romo, where Troy Aikman is compared to, to Roger Staubach. Okay. And I'll drink to that one. <laughs> my, hey, have a great time tomorrow, my friend. I appreciate you doing this. Thank you. And I'll make sure, by the way, he, yeah. he did say you're delusional, but any words for 55 uh, um, Ask him about his cock work. <laughs> Yes, good morning. He said the Eagles are doing their cock work. Oh my God. Cock no, uh, cock work. Ask him about that. No, but I'll, I'll, I'll joke you aside. Billy 500, he's one of actually my best friends. We actually haven't met, but I will literally go to the wire for that guy, man. You know, I, I, I will cut him down. I will disrespect him, but you better not mess with Philly 500. That's one of my people right there, man. And let me also say, um, Ultra Cowboys is in your chat. Who Ultra is? Cowboys, Ultra Cowboy. Um, we'll be seeing him here at the draft, buddy. We're here. Can't wait to cook up with you guys. And I appreciate you, Eagle fans, letting me come in and bloviate in here so you guys can laugh at me. Hey, all, hey, oh, wait, hey, hey Mark, you know what, though? They're in some that? illusion <laughs> that that North Turner or like Ernie Zampese is admired. When it comes oh. to <laughs> they think Ernie Zampese is now the new offensive coordinator of the Eagles now. And I'm like, I tell you what, okay. I can't wait when it falls apart to come in here. Okay. <laughs> when they turn on Kellen Moore, I'm going to be sitting here with my shitty grin and say, I told you, mother helpers, as I sip on my lemonade. <laughs> Absolutely. Brother, I appreciate it. Thank you. All right, man. Talk to you later. Get to draft. That is our friend Mark Holmes. Don't forget to check him out on all of his platforms. He does a really good job, and he gets ready for the draft. That'll be tomorrow. So there you have it. When we come back, we're going to take a look at the top 32 and my top 32 players that will be in the National Football League draft and the guys that I have put not by team needs. These are the 32 best players that I'm going to look at when it comes to the draft. Hit the like button. Keep it here, National Football Show.